Hey everybody and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our big show where you show you some of the biggest and best books that are on order this week. Your orders are due a Sunday around 6 o'clock so you don't miss out on any of the comic goodness. So head on over to infinityflux.net right now. You can follow along. You can check out all the stuff that we don't even talk about on here because there's a ton of stuff. But we will be talking about the biggest ones we yeah. think you want to know about. And that is the absolute truth. <laughs> wink, uh, wink. <laughs> wink. Uh, so let's get into it, starting with our featured comics. We are going to start with absolute Batman number two. Number one is awesome, sold out super fast. Artie is getting a third printing because the second printing sold out at yeah. the distributor level in like a week. Uh, and now we are looking ahead to number two, which they actually just showed some interior pages of at New York Comic Con like half an hour ago. Mm -hmm. It looks awesome. We got our first look at the Batmobile and some more big action with Batman taking out a bunch of bad guys. Um, we actually don't really know a lot about the story of this particular issue, though. Uh, we do know that the solicitation says a Batman versus Alfred Pennyworth, which you can see there on the screen on the cover. Um, it does say that Alfred starts to track down the lonely life of Bruce Wayne, which I kind of feel like he already did that in the first he issue. Knew a lot yeah, about he found him out in the first a lot issue. about Bruce Wayne, yeah. But he, it says that he discovers the interconnectivity between yeah. Bruce Wayne's life and the many layers of the Black Mask Gang, which in issue one they were called the Party Animals. So, you know, not really sure where this is going yet. It's going to be more Batman, more Alfred. Uh, sounds like we are going to get uh, a closer look at the inner workings of the party animals, which in the first issue, they didn't, it was, they just looked like they were chaos agents, yeah. basically. So just more awesomeness from Absolute Batman number two. Uh, we will know more when we get to read it. Uh, this comes out on uh, November 13th. So we'll be reading it and talking about it a couple days before then on our Monday show. But yeah, definitely. Please pre-order this because, again, the first issue sold out super fast. Mm -hmm. The second print sold out before it even hit stores. Now it's on the third printing. So if you want the first printing of number two, please pre-order this weekend so that you can guarantee your copy. So we have our A cover here by Nick Dragota. There is a Daniel Warren Johnson cover. There's a Jay Lee cover. There's a Raphael Albuquerque cover, which I really like that one. Uh, there's a Dan Panosian I cover. A nice Frank Miller homage. Um, and to go along with that, we also have, uh, this is, sorry, I'm just going to write a note there. Uh, we, obviously, we also have Absolute Batman Noir Edition. So this is basically an all black and white edition of the first issue. So you can see, it kind of if you ever saw the ash can, the, these pencils look really good in black and white. So uh, And actually at New York Comic Con just about a half hour ago, they did announce that every Absolute book will have a noir edition of number one when the number two issue of that book comes out. So our first one here is is uh, Absolute Batman. Uh, you know, same book, but all in black and white. And this looks stunning in black and white. So also pre-order this because I feel pretty certain that this will sell out too. Yeah. Uh, so this is our A cover. We have a black blank cardstock variant. And then there is the foil version of that also. Shiny black and white. Yeah, I know. That's, that's what I was thinking. Shiny black and white seems seen weird. I've one of those. Yeah. Next up, there is another huge book this week. It is G.I. Joe number one. It's all been leading here from the Duke series, the Scarlet, Cobra Commander, Destro. It's all coming together as we thought would inevitably happen. Yeah. We are getting a G.I. Joe book that is going to be huge and awesome. This is going to be by uh, Joshua Williamson, who wrote your... Uh, he Duke. wrote Duke and... And uh, Cobra Commander. And Cobra yeah. Commander. And the art is by Tom Riley, who is your artist on the Duke book. Uh, and the colors are by Jordi Belair. And following up from these miniseries, we've seen how Duke has went from kind of a wanted man to now you know, basically putting together his own team uh, to face this new threat uh, of Cobra Commander. Even though they don't really know too much about them at this point. Right. We still have yet to see kind of their first big conflict. Uh, but, you know, we're going to be getting... What's going on with Cobra and Destro and the twins and all of them. We're getting all that's going to be kind of the establishment of G.I. Joe. And we're getting, uh, you know, familiar faces, which you can already see some uh, there on the cover. We are getting new characters. There, In particular, I think is one 
big new character in this that was created for this series. Plus, uh, that's only part of the surprises. So we got to check out an early copy of this, mm -hmm. but even that had some <laughs> redacted pages that were too spoilerific yeah. to, uh, you know, they didn't want it getting out. So who knows what lies in this book, but I'm sure it's going to be a page turn to remember. Yeah. yeah, this is a really good book too. Um, you know, it's very <clears throat> uh, early days for G.I. Joe. They're still trying to feel each other out, trying to, uh, they worked well together as a team, but there's still a little ways to go. And there's still a lot of to learn about, like you said, Cobra and Cobra Commander and all those guys. So a uh, very great issue. Like it's a natural progression of all those miniseries, but um I don't know where I was going with that. It's really but, cool, yeah. It's that element of there's going to be something else, and I feel like that's going to be the you know the the punchline at the end, the yeah. thing that's like, oh wow, because uh, we also know that Cobra is now in possession of a lot of Energon, mm -hmm. and what is he going to do with that? We've already seen him experiment a little with Energon. Who knows where he could take that? Uh, Especially with the way that Destro ended, yeah, with Cobra Commander seeing something, and I also feel like there might be a little something with the bats. Because they mentioned oh, yeah. in the last issue, it's like, they're pieces of junk. They don't work. Yeah. I feel like they're going to figure out a way, maybe put a little inner John in them or yeah. something to, yeah. to fire them up. But I can't wait for this. Uh, if you've been reading any of those series, you're definitely going to want to come here uh, because this is this is the book. This yeah. is the Justice League <clears throat> of the G.I. Joe universe. And this is an ongoing. It's an so ongoing, All the other yeah. ones were a miniseries. This one is ongoing. This is your main G.I. Joe book going forward. Absolutely. So... We've got some great covers for this. First off, we have our A cover, which is by Tom Riley. It's a wraparound cover, and that's your interior artist. We have a Jerome Opeña cover. We have a Brett Booth cover. I love Cover Girl, so yeah. I love seeing her on the cover. We have a David Finch cover, which is... That, that makes uh, Cobra Commander look like he could handle himself. Right. We've got a Libra Mayo cover, which this is sick. Yeah. Like, this is... This is awesome. Can you imagine that in foil or if just a mask were foil? Holy cow. Uh, we also have a Suzumaka cover with everyone's favorite Baroness. We have a Jenny Frizen with our new character. What was her name? Chameleon. Chameleon. She was really cool uh, in Destro. We have a blank sketch area. Now notice the difference in here. Up in the left-hand corner, we've got this is the G.I. Joe version. And there is a Cobra version. So get your favorite artist to draw... Uh, a Joe and a Cobra facing off. That would yeah. be really cool. <clears throat> we also have a Tom Riley wraparound foil variant okay. of the A cover. We have a Jenny Frizen foil cover. And this one's really cool. This is the Andrea Milana Cobra Commander mask die cut foil variant. So okay. who knows what's going to happen when you, you fold it out. But, you know. This is going to be a, a cool one. Yeah, so. like what's is is the die cut going to be all the white part, and then you open it up, and it's Cobra Commander's head with. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I guess so, maybe, hmm. but we'll have to wait and find yeah. out. Well, next up we've got Lara Kinney Wolverine number one, and this is written by Erica Schultz, and the art is by Giotto Belviso. And uh, we don't get a lot of information about this, but we do know that Lara is going to encounter mutants who are being forced to use their powers against their will. And she is going to take the fight to the people that are forcing them to do that wherever in the world they may be. So that, you know, they, they made a point to say, Laura's going global. Mm -hmm. And wherever these people are, wherever these bad people are, she will hunt them down uh, in the name of mutant kind. And that's pretty much it. That's all we know for now. Uh, do we know if this is an ongoing or a miniseries? I do not know. You I'm not should, sure. I feel like with Marvel, we don't learn until a couple issues into yeah. it if it's going to be... Because uh, there's one uh, I'll be talking about later that I didn't know if it was ongoing or yeah. a mini series, and okay. then I found out it was a mini. So wait and see. Yeah, wait and see. But uh, a new Laura Kinney Wolverine book, and it sounds really cool. So we have our A cover. We have a J. Scott Campbell variant. I love that with her kind of classic, more yeah. classic look. Yeah. There's a J. Um, Anac Anacleto variant. There is a Larix foil variant. That's going to be in foil. And then there's a logo variant, just in case you don't know what Laura Kinney's Wolverine. How to spell her yeah, name right. <laughs> on top of the regular Wolverine. <laughs> Okay, next up, we've got Black Lightning. So this is going to be kind of like the JSA. This is in the all-in, you know, era of DC, but mm -hmm. this is a new title. So great jumping on point. Uh, this is going to be written by Brandon Thomas, and the art is by Fico Osio, which I love. And I got a chance to read this today, and it is awesome. 
So I, I, this new uh, like look for Black Lightning is super cool in here, uh, and this really follows up on the DC uh, All In special with the Justice League's Watchtower and all that, as they basically recruit Black Lightning to be a liaison or uh, the head of a thing called the Meta Human Outreach Initiative, and as you'll learn as you read some books going forward, the powers that got taken away. Uh, during absolute power have been given back some to the wrong people right and some people have started to show signs of new powers and so it's up to black lightning to kind of head that off and 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 find them before they hurt themselves or hurt others and so but he's really excited because he's actually doing this with his daughter uh thunder uh who is uh anissa and from reading this, the little bit I got that wasn't in the uh, solicitation is he, he's really happy to work with his daughter. It's, it's really fun. He gets to kind of take her up to the new JLA watchtower and give her a tour. Like she gets to meet some of the like higher ranking Just League members who she's very uh, excited about, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome because you get a lot of the new, the new watchtower. We learned a little bit more about how they travel from the watchtower that, that's in this that I thought was really cool. But there is someone that they find who has some powers that uh, you'll have to read about to see. But also, Black Lightning does have two daughters. Now, what is going on with Lightning, his other daughter? You'll have to read that to find out. But I thought this was super, super cool. The art is fantastic. You do get cameos by a lot of other Justice League members in the Watchtower. You get to see great interactions between Black Lightning and a few of the other ones. Uh, But... Highly recommend this. I thought it was really, really cool. So don't miss out on Black Lightning number one. We've got our A cover here. We have a Torin Clark variant. And we have a Sanford Green variant. Next up is Calavera PI number one. Now, this is going to be a four issue mini series. This is from Oni, and it's written and drawn by Marco Finnegan. This is set in 1925, and it's about a guy named Juan Calavera. He used to be a hero who defended the Chicano Barrios where the police refused to operate, but eventually he was killed. But uh, on the Day of the Dead, he's been summoned from the grave to help a former colleague solve a kidnapping that hits close to home. But he only has days to actually solve this before he is called back to the underworld. Will he be able to solve that mystery of the, uh, of the, of the, of the kidnapping of the missing person? Will be able to solve that and also the mystery of his own murder before time runs out. So this sounds like a, a cool, fun, uh, new supernatural detective noir kind mm. of story. Sounds like uh, a lot of fun and Oni puts out some really cool stuff. So can't wait to check this one out. Uh, we have our A cover by Marco Finnegan. So that's your interior artist. And then there is a Ramon uh, Perez variant. Next up, we have Marvel Holiday Tales to Astonish. This is going to be just a one shot for the holidays, uh, which will be great. I love these like holiday theme books. They just did the Halloween one, and now mm-hmm. we're getting a Christmas one. This is going to be by like all of them. It's various uh, writers and artists. The only one it really mentions is uh, uh, Jerry Duggan, which I love. But we've got a bunch of different stories in here. Some of them are the Fantastic Four are having a holiday party, but there's an unexpected guest that shows up. Hopefully it's Dr. Doom bearing gifts. <laughs> right. Uh, then, Who else would it be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or Herbie. Yeah. Herbie right. Oh, come yeah. showing off gifts. Uh, then there is a tale of Hanukkah's past with Kitty Pride as she is shopping for kind of her new family, the X-Men, but also trying to defend uh her and the people around her from some attack hopefully it's a giant evil snowman (laughs) and then also we have a new year's story starring peter and miles so you it's not only christmas but it's christmas hanukkah new year's the whole kind of december month of holidays so this is going to be really really fun i always love reading these you have a like a collection of the holiday books that you pull out every year i keep them in the box with my christmas (laughs) ornaments so when I get my Christmas ornaments out, there's a stack of comics, like Christmas-themed comics. I read them every year. so much fun. It takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, I think that's Love a it. fun thing that people should yeah. do, mm-hmm. is kind of gather up their holiday comics. Yeah. So we've got our A cover right here. We have a Romero cover. Maybe Silver Surfer, because it looks like maybe they yeah. got him a new board yeah. or something. That seems like a big gift. <laughs> 
Uh, and then we also have a wraparound homage cover, which you see the back of them running there and yeah. the front. Oh, that's homaging uh, the um, shoot. Uh, I think it's a it's a it's a holiday special from like 1976. I think yeah, where that that was like that. The front was them from this way, but then the back was the back of them. Is that like an Art Adams cover or something? I'm not sure. No, he did one of the holiday covers. Well, next up we have. Sorry about that. We have uh, a new book called Christmas Number uh, Christmas Three Sixty Five Number One. This is going to be. This isn't a one shot. I don't know how many issues, but it's more. I know that there's at least a, a second issue. This is written by Mikey Way of My Chemical Romance and also Jonathan Rivera, and the art is by Piotr Kowal uh, Kowalski. This is about a guy named Peter Rockwell. He and his family have had a really tough year, and it's causing them to drift apart on Christmas rather than come together but peter accepts the wisdom of a santa claus at a local mall and he hatches a plan to give his family the best christmas ever now it, it doesn't quite say specifically but it, it does say the best um i think it says something about the best year ever one christmas at a time so i don't know if it's like a groundhog day i thing, bet it is they... because it's christmas 365 so i don't know if it's like 365 days of christmas of those, i or... wish every day was christmas yeah and then be careful what you wish for. Type yeah, thing. something like that. And uh, so that sounds like a pretty, you know, normal Christmas story. But the second issue talks about things like radioactive eggnog and how Peter turns his home into a theme park for weirdos on the internet. So this does sound a little bit zany. I don't know. At first, when I saw the flaming Christmas tree, I thought, oh, this is going to be a supernatural horror Christmas mm -hmm. book. I don't think it's that. But it does sound like a pretty wacky Christmas story of this guy, Peter, and his family... Getting up to all kinds of holiday hijinks. Well, because also, like, she's hanging up a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. There's, like, a red, white, and blue thing, maybe for Fourth of July. So. Oh, an Easter bunny? Yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe other holidays. There's a, th a pilgrim hat for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But it's very intriguing. Yeah, very intriguing for sure. And this comes out on uh, d d December 4th. So, you know, right in time for holiday season. So, this is our only cover we have. Next up, we've got a Spider Boy, issue number 13. So this issue is going to be your secret origin of Spider-Girl. Her first appearance is going to be in this coming week's issue. Yeah, number 12. Number 12. Uh, so you don't want to miss that to get her big first appearance. There's some great coverage for that. But this is going to be your secret origin. But also, there's another big first appearance in here. Uh, before I get to that, it also talks about what is the Golden Fang and why... Uh, does it mean the death of Spider-Boy and Daredevil? Or it may mean the death of Spider-Boy and Daredevil. Uh, which I can't wait to see their, them be yeah. back together because that's such a fun thing. But, uh, so we've got our covers here and I'll talk about the first appearance in a second. We've got our A cover here. We've got a Chrissy Zulo <laughs> thing variant, which that's just, that's kind of fun. It's kind of like Kamala. Yeah. Like how she yeah. would do the, the big end. Uh, we have a Jose Maria Casanova's Craven the Hunter variant, which are we getting a series of Craven the Hunter variants? Um, maybe this, you know, the movie comes out in oh, December. Oh, yeah, that may be what it is. <clears throat> uh, we also have this Mark Bagley uh, variant. Actually, this is the Todd Knock, and then we don't have the bag the Bagley variant on here. I think we downloaded it the wrong I should have been there. Okay. But it's Hulkette. Yeah. There's a, there's a new Hulk uh, character, Hulkette. But it is, they're calling it a spoiler variant, but Marvel has already released it. So you can see that online. You can probably see it on the website if that's been updated yeah. as well. If you go to Marvel Comics Twitter account, it's on there. I did download it. It's supposed to be. It, it could just randomly pop up during one it, of these Yeah, days, it, so it may we'll show up. Who see. knows? It might be at the end. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, big first appearance in this issue. Well, next up is the um, Wolverine weapon. I'm sorry, well, Deadpool Wolverine <laughs> weapon extraction one shot. Now, this is this is a one shot that collects those eight um, the, the the eight part storyline that ran in the backup of a bunch of different books. Um, this all they're all together in one issue now, and we figured they would do this yeah. when it first started coming out. But this is written by Ryan North and the artist by Javier Garon. And in this one, you know, Wolverine and Deadpool go uh, traveling through the multiverse to try to find and stop whoever is trying to destroy the multiverse and but it's actually kind of silly but in a good way because they go to they go to an earth where everything is the same as like the regular earth but everybody has like a dapper handlebar mustache uh i think there's a there's a world where they go to everybody's an animal like that kind of thing yeah so they go to some pretty wacky 
alternate Earths to try to track down who is tr destroying the uh, the multiverse, and it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, if you read all of those, I don't think there's any. They did, it didn't mention anything about a, a, a mm -hmm. new chapter or anything like that. So if you read all those, you may not need to get this unless you just want them all collected. But if you didn't read it, it's a pretty fun story. And uh, we have three covers. There's our A cover. There is a Doodle Pool <laughs> cover, and there is a uh, Rod Rice variant also. That was really cool. Yeah. Next up, we have the Avengers number 21. We wanted to bring this up because this is your, I guess, start of, I'm not sure how many parts it's going to be, but your Avengers versus X-Men. So if you know the classic, uh, now classic story, Avengers versus X-Men, that happened quite a few years ago, 10 plus years ago, um, Jed McKay is kind of bringing that back a little bit because he is writing both the Avengers book and the... Uh, the X-Men title currently. So this is going to bounce between those two. <clears throat> There's not a whole lot of details about it, but it does say that it's going to set the stage for some future stories, uh, which, you know, this could just be like a, maybe link to some big event or something. <clears throat> and then we also have in this Captain, Captain Marvel versus Cyclops, which I want to say might've happened in the original one. Cause I remember Cyclops, I mean, Cyclops fought Captain America. But either way, he's, I don't know. I don't have a lot of hope for Cyclops in that fight. I feel like he would be down after that one punch from Captain Marvel uh, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> she I mean, knocks his jaw clean off or is, something. Is she like knocking his visor off and it's like shattered? Yeah, or maybe. Like yeah. that, that's a big punch to mm -hmm. feel the, the shock waves on the ground. So if you want to uh, join in on the new Avengers vs. X-Men, which is not, at least at this point, a big event, but it's going to be contained within those books, you'll want to get this one if you're reading Avengers and not reading X-Men or vice versa. Uh, check it out. So we've got our A cover for this. We also have a Bengal Marvel vs. Capcom variant. And we're going to see more of these throughout the show. Yep. And we also have a Mateo Lolly variant as well. Next up is Spectrum number one. This is a six issue series from Mad Cave. Uh, it's written by Rick Quinn and the artist by Dave Chisholm. And this is set back in 1999 during the World Trade Organization protest. They called it the Battle of Seattle back then. It's about a young girl named Melody Parker. She thinks that she has completely lost her mind. She's seeing androids. She's seeing aliens. She's seeing pigs in high fashion and other wacky things. And she also sees an elemental being named Echo who has the power to alter reality through music. And that being invites Melody to join her as she brings about the end of the world. And Melody tries to escape this strange being, but suppressed memories from across vast spans of time flood into her awareness, bringing her very identity into question. So This sounds crazy. That sounds like a Christopher Nolan movie <laughs> or something like that. So lots of stuff going on there. It's kind of hard to sort of gauge what this is like off, off of just that one solicitation but we'll definitely talk more about it when it comes out but yeah just a new um a new very uh heady cerebral bug yeah. for you uh so there's our a cover by dave chisholm so that's your interior artist and there and there is a uh, uh raiko uh, murakami variant as well and before we go on because i swear i downloaded it just in case you know that's what the that's the cover to that's the spoiler cover to spider boy number 13 with hulk act so in case it doesn't pop up in here, we wanted to be sure to show you that cover right there. We weren't lying. There really is a cover. There no, really it was a, a spoiler, cover. and then Marvel tweeted that a couple days ago, so that's the cover. Marvel said, this is a spoiler, and they said, nah, don't worry nah, about yeah, it. That's not a spoiler. It's cool. Next up, we've got other number ones, because there's still more to talk about, including from the world of Minor Threats, Brood number one. So this is by your creative team that's been doing uh, all of the uh, Minor Threats books. Uh, we've got Patton Oswalt, Heath Carson, and Jordan Bloom. And this time the art is by Ian Colbert. And I know that uh, Minor Threats has a big following. I think they announced it's going to get a Netflix series. Yeah. I think that's where it was animated? supposed to be. Is it animated? I, yeah, I can't remember. I feel like this would be perfect to have like the Invincible treatment. Yeah. This would work. Well. Oh, is my that gosh. Kind yeah. of like adult animated. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one is going to explore some of the villains. There's a family... Uh, a, a, a crime family or a, a big criminal. He kind of sounds like a big superpowered mobster, uh, Napoleon Archimedes. And he is kind of the father of this family. And he is the sworn enemy, the arch, enemy, uh, arch nemesis to the searcher. And they fought each other for decades. But 
uh, uh, Napoleon realizes that he's getting older and he needs to pass on this this fight to one of his kids. So he has three children: Athena, Benjamin, and Spook Show, which which is a great name. Yeah. Uh, he's got them, but uh, who's he gonna give it to? And they are going to have to kind of compete for that uh, that prize. But also, this is gonna explore what it means, what it's like growing up under this. Uh, criminal mastermind what kind of father was he and how did it shape their childhood and can they rise above the family betrayals and the dysfunction to seize the family business so sounds really cool and if you're a minor threats fan i know we have a lot at our store uh they've been reading all of them you got the barfly going on right now and next up you have the brood is barfly still going on uh it's either it's got like maybe an issue left um or it just wrapped up i don't remember but they've all been great, so don't miss out on this one. We've got our A cover right here. We have a Colbert variant, so that's your uh, interior artist. We have a John Snyder variant. And we have a Kevin Maguire variant, which Very is nice. kind of a homage to uh, Just League International. Is it's it? the same angle where they're like looking down uh, the Just League International yeah. one. but. Who knows, but same artist and everything, so very cool. Next up is Wind, The Power of the Blood, number one. This is going to be an eight-issue series. Uh, this is the last story, the last mm -hmm. part in the overall Wind saga from James Tynion. The art is by Michael uh, uh, Dialinus. Dialinus, sorry. Dialinus, sorry. Um, uh, so I haven't actually read any wind. I have like two, two trades at home, but I haven't read it yet. So this sounds a little bit strange to me. Uh, this says the King's reign is coming to a close with Pike town, unaware of what awaits them. Fairy kind mobilizes for war while Zedra keeps two faithful prisoners. And Zedra also concocts a hair raising plan concerning her deceased brother, the bandaged man. So if you've been reading wind, all of that makes sense to you. I have not read it yet, but I do have them at home. And I do want to read them. Uh, I flipped through them. They, they look like great fantasy stories. Yeah, they've been going on for a long time. Yeah. The original win came out years ago. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we definitely want to make you aware of this first issue of the last chapter of the saga. Hopefully so, they'll do a nice like compendium. Oh, that'd be real nice. Yeah. Of all of them. <clears throat> but hopefully it's like, but they're smaller, right? Yeah, the collected like... editions are smaller. So maybe that'd be, it'd be cool to have an omnibus, but of that smaller size. Uh, so this is our A cover. That is your interior artist right there. There is a, uh, Infanti variant, and there is an FOC reveal variant. Very cool. Next up, we have Batman Uncovered, number one. You know the drill with these. It is a collection of uh, some of the best covers of the character uh, in the title. We've had a bunch of these with Harley and Poison Ivy and Joker and everything. This time, Batman seems like... It's rare that Batman's one of the later people to get something. Right, yeah. But uh, we're getting a Batman one. It's going to feature uh, famous covers. And what's cool about these, uh, they collect a lot of the covers that were either store exclusives or oh, stuff yeah. that wasn't really like readily available. So you can see those. And usually they have a, a narration or the character that it talks about kind of pops in every once in a while to make comments on it. Um, you're going to have artists like Jim Lee, Joel Jones, Greg Capullo, and more in here so if you're a fan of covers and cover art you don't want to miss out on this one plus you've got new covers for this book of covers including this uh jorge jimenez cover which is awesome we have a david nakayama cover we have a steve lieber cover which i really like that yeah. his face the bad it's hard to also hide in the shadows in a snowy right. <laughs> field with trees with no leaves on yep. them and then there is a foil version of the david nakayama cover that's gonna be really cool all right, so this is the Batman Santa Claus Silent Night Returns number one. It's going to be a five-issue series. <clears throat> We're going to talk more about this on a future show because this is not fully on FOC yet. So this is another one of those deals where this is a special cover. This is the... Um, oh, shoot. It's the... Um, holidays. Oh, it's cut off here. Uh, it's like a special... It's a scratch and sniff. Yeah, it's a scratch and sniff. Isn't it polybag too or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it is. It's polybagged in what looks like like Christmas wrapping. Yeah. So, a special cover. So, this is one of those that because it's a special cover, it needs more 
leeway time. So we'll talk about the actual book. I think the FOC date for that one is another couple weeks from now. But if you want this special cover of this particular book, you need to go ahead and order it now because it takes longer to put the scent in there. They have to yeah. rub the scent in so that when you scratch it, it comes out, and then they got to put it in the poly bag. So, but yeah, we'll talk more about the uh, overall series uh, in a couple weeks. I love the cover, too. I love looking at all the ornaments, the different characters. You even have, like, Gentleman Ghost as an ornament. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Fate and Dark Side and uh, Orion. So that's, that's a really fun cover. Yeah. Next up, we got Notable 2s and 3s continuations of series, starting with Mystique, uh, number 2. This is going to be a 5-issue miniseries. I wasn't sure about that when number 1 came out. It's a 5-issue miniseries. Number 1 was great and also had a lot of world-building for the Marvel Universe, not just Mystique and the X-Men, but kind of where some characters have been mm -hmm, yeah. and all that was explored, which is really cool. In this one, Nick Fury Jr. is on the tale of Mystique. He's, you know, supposed to be kind of cataloging and, and making notes about where all the mutants are after Krakoa. And so he is uh, hot on the tails of Mystique. So she is going to go to an old uh, ally from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and makes me wonder, is it Avalanche? I Which, just love that it's an Avalanche Avalanche. That yeah. is the coolest cover ever. Which I always love Avalanche. I loved him in uh, X-Men Evolution. Yeah. He was really cool. Had the really cool suit on yeah. and everything. So... Uh, I really liked the first issue. I was surprised how much I liked it because I like Mystique, but I was wondering, you know, she may be a hard character to build a whole series yeah. around, and they nailed it with this kind of espionage, uh, who can you trust type thing. Yeah, that's so, perfect for her. Yeah. yeah. So we've got our A cover right here. We've got a David Lopez variant, which if you read the first issue, uh, let, let's ponder what this one yeah. means. And we have a Franny Mystique variant, yeah, which is really, really, really nice. nice. Next up is Iron Man number two. The first issue comes out next week. We'll be talking about it on Monday. But this is the second issue of the new Iron Man ongoing series. And it's part two of the Stark Rocks on War, which is the first big story arc they're telling in this new series. Um, it's the return of Iron Monger. But who is in the suit... Uh, I guess maybe we don't know as of the first issue. I guess we don't know yet. Um, and But we do know that Iron Man in this is going to be forced back to basics in an offline clunker. Uh, he's reduced to raw firepower and sheer force of will. It's a and shovel can... coal into his butt to keep, <laughs> to yeah. keep himself flying. It's steam powered, yeah. But um, yeah, so you can kind of see it there. I don't have my number one out, you know, or else we could show you the... Yeah, you've got it right here. So that's the... Uh, he's got kind of this like... It almost looks steampunk. -y. It does look very steampunk. It, uh, steampunk. Like and yeah, all that. steampunk slash a little medieval. Yeah. Um. So we don't know. We do know he has like a big sword too. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. So we don't know why he's in the suit of armor. Like I said, uh, on Monday we'll let you know more about the first issue. Maybe we'll get some answers there. And that's I'm really Iron excited. Right there. Yeah. Too. Which in this he's huge. Yeah. So I'm very I'm I'm very excited for this. Like that's uh, Iron Man number one next week is one of my most anticipated books. Uh, so can't wait to check this out. So there's our A cover. We have an Abonquello thing variant. That's sick. That's awesome. I want that yeah. book. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a Tarn Clark variant also. Which I always love, just all the other suits. Yeah. You can tell everyone loves the Silver Centurion armor because it's always, when there's a big group of them, it's yeah. like, oh, that one, because it's so cool. Yeah, I love the Silver Centurion armor. We're getting West Coast Avengers number one soon, and he's wearing that in that book, so I don't know if, they, if, they're gonna, if these are going to kind of line up or... If he'll have armor in that one, but this one he's just got like got that clunker and and maybe don't worry about it. Maybe it'll say like these events take yeah. place before Iron Man number one or something. He only has the good suits out in California. Yeah, and they can't. Uh, there's yeah, a can't. whole customs yeah, thing or for something. Real. Okay, next up we have Dazzler number three. So issue number two of this is going to be coming out next week, and I'll go over that uh, on Monday. But this one's really cool because Dazzler is uh, having a duet going on tour with Lila Cheney. <laughs> From the, uh, I remember a lot in um, X Factor. Yeah. Uh, and they are in Japan, and the mysterious villain that has been kind of stalking them creates some bad publicity. That's how you defeat Dazzler. It's not hand to hand combat, it's bad publicity <laughs> uh, for the two when they venture out into the streets of Tokyo. So, sounds really fun. I really like the first issue. It was, it felt like, uh, the stakes weren't like super super high mm -hmm. it's more about the fun of dazzler which i think was really fitting this is uh 
going to be your A cover by Terry Dodson, who I believe is doing all of the A covers for this series. We have an Annie Wu variant. I would love this if it was foil, but it's just like her bracelets and around her eyes. Yeah, and really maybe cool. like the like the yeah. eye right there. Yeah, we have a lot of <laughs> ideas that, that people should listen to. Yeah, no. Uh, we have a, <laughs> this one's <one's> so <laughs> disturbing to look at. This is the uh, Anadito the Thing variant, which the <laughs> the puffy like cheeks and stuff of thing on there make it look like a kind of a scary robot. And I love that instead of rock pieces, it's a disco ball. Yeah. Holy cow, that's Maybe hilarious. Gotta, it's almost like um, uh, Emma Frost. Yeah. Get some Emma Frost vibes. Yeah. And then we also have the Sean Isaacs. That is your previous artist on Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. And we've seen him do quite a bit of covers and stuff at Marvel yeah. the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So I wonder if we're going to be seeing him maybe on a book soon. Maybe I hope so. He's great. Yeah. Well, next we have Blade Red Band number two. It's going to be a five-issue series. And all of these are Red Band uh, poly bag books. So there's not like a regular version. They're all po in a poly bag. Um, there's not a whole lot of info on this issue in particular. We just know that after the events of Blood Hunt, Blade is trying to sort of keep to himself. Uh, but he finds himself embroiled in a conflict and his bloodlust reignited. You read the first mm -hmm. one and, and liked it pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fun. It wasn't as red band as I think they wanted you to think it was. Right. Uh, that could change. The second issue could just be all out. Yeah. But uh, I, I still thought it was really good. I really like Blade's look in it. He has a great look he in it. He has a yeah. great look in it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. The first issue is definitely a lot of setup. I'm looking forward to see where the story actually goes because that's kind of it left the first issue with like, here's your mission. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward and, to it. And now go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So we have our uh, A cover right here and there's a Federici, uh, Federica Mancine variant also. Very cool. Next up we have Star Wars The Battle of Jakku Republic Under Siege. This is our second mini series in the Battle of Jakku and it's just thundering on. We've only got the first two issues of the first series. We're already talking about issue number two of the second series. Uh, but this one sounds fun, and you can see on the cover, the last issue was like, they get saved by a mysterious fan favorite character, and then this one is like, Luke and Aphra join forces. I think that character is Aphra. She's on the cover oh, here. Yeah. I imagine that's who that mysterious character in the previous issue is going to be. But I, I'm really excited because this is kind of the first time we've seen Dr. Aphra at post the original trilogy. Uh, her whole thing has been between the movies. And now all of our characters are branching out into the wider world. Have we seen her and Luke meet before? I have think they, they have before? met um, very briefly. They, ha I think they teamed up for a little bit. But, you know, this is really highlighting that they're going to be together. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. I really like the series so far. So we're continuing with issue number two. We've got our A cover here. We have our Berenz variant, which is awesome. we got... I guess that's Bosk, although his armor looks a little bit different. Yeah. But I like that alien in the background who one of his eyes is like IJ-88's head. Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, we also have this... Uh, it does not say the artist on this one. Isn't that... Um, is that Taran Clark? Yeah, but that, that does look like Taran Clark's um, signature. And then we also have a U variant, which I'm not sure if we know who this character is yet. Kind of has some Mandalorian, like ancient Mandalorian vibes, yeah. like their original Do helmets. Yeah, you see the, the antenna looking thing? Yeah, it's got the, the, the T, view. but yeah. it's a little bit more rough. So we'll have to wait and see. Next we have Night of the Slashers number two. And there's not a whole lot of info about this issue either, but uh, we do know that... Uh, I, I read the first one, and it was really cool. It's about a, a group of kids who get stuck in this town, and this town has this curse on it where one night a year, everybody in the town turns into these bloodthirsty monsters, and the kids get stuck in that town on that night. And they go stay in a hotel because they're waiting for their bus to get fixed, and when they're in the hotel, all everybody in the town turns into these monsters, and they're freaked out. So, uh, but we don't know what the second issue... Now, I will say that the first issue, um, that, that big transformation happened right at the end. So it's like, oh my gosh, what are they going to do? So now we're starting to get into the meat and potatoes of the whole story. So that's why I'm very excited to, uh, to read this one. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing really more about what happens in particular 
But this is our uh, B cover. This is the B cover. The A cover was maybe a little too graphic for oh, YouTube. Oh, I was so. going to say, well, I was, yeah, I was like, that doesn't, yeah, why? Yeah, not? so I just put the B cover, but you can check out the A cover on our website, yeah. infinityflux.net. But yeah, a really cool, um, it's a really cool horror book from Magma Comics. They have been putting out a bunch of really great stuff. I recommend the first one if you like horror books, and I can't wait to see the second one, like, now that everything's, like, yeah. out in the open, and now that all the bad things are happening, I can't wait to see it uh, all play out. Next up, we have The Terminator number two. And I'll tell you, number one of this was a hit. Um, really? Yeah, it was sold out. It is awesome. I mean, for one, it was just a really good read and a cool new take on kind of Terminators through different time periods. Yeah. Even though the, the first one took place in like 2018, it was still cool to see different environments. You know, this isn't like, what's Sarah Connor up to again? Mm. This is like, hey, let's see the Terminator up against other people yeah. at different times. Uh, so I think this is going to be really big. Uh, Terminator, it's funny to call it Terminator 2. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, Terminator issue number two uh, is in Saigon in uh, 1975 as the war is winding down. And the rumor of a one-man platoon spreads as some trapped soldiers spy their attacker, a lone figure, impervious to all attacks and devoid of fear or hesitation. So that's pretty cool being out in the jungle and like you're like oh there's a soldier and it turns out to be because at that point he probably has skin on him too yeah yeah and they think like you know kind of sounds like uh, uh like predator or right. something but yeah i think this is going to be great so don't miss out number one was really good declan chalvey is doing an awesome job so check out issue number two this is our a cover we have a galman variant we have a moss variant which that's that's, that's really great. cool yeah uh we have a Cusins variant. We have a, uh, I guess this is Bob Layton, uh, FOC Layton original variant, which is, is fitting because he has this, so many famous Iron Man yeah. stuff too. Uh, and then there is a Ross Burning Earth icon variant, which is, like we mentioned the first one, Alex Ross's first published work was uh, Terminator Burning Earth. It was the series. And so they're reprinting those covers on this series. Next up, we got cool covers. Well, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 62. This is part of the Eight Deaths of Spider-Man storyline. And I love that uh, this is only, I think, the second, think issue, the second issue in that story arc. And in the second issue of this story arc, he has already burned through one of his eight lives. And now he has to face off against the Scion of Sidorak. Which, uh, you know, Juggernaut has the, the jewel of Sidorak, which is what gives him his powers. And Spider-Man can barely stop the Juggernaut, who has just a fraction of Sidorak's power. Now he has to go up against the actual oh. god of Sidorak. So that should be really cool. Plus, the, the it, plus I think about the Crimson Bands of Sidorak, which is one of the things that Doctor Strange always uses too. But yeah, just the next part in the Eight Deaths of Spider-Man storyline. And I guess by the time we get here, he will be down to seven lives. <laughs> Don't know why. Maybe like, one death per issue. Yeah, probably. Uh, so we have our A cover out here. We have an Alex Saviak Marvel two and one variant, which they've been doing this some of like these. Like a fun issue. Yeah, I want to read uh, this. I just want to go back and read Marvel two and one now. Uh, there is a Gleb Melnikov variant, and there. It's kind of the first time we've seen the full look at his suit and yeah. like his cape and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there is a uh, a young a, oh Scott Young Scott Young yeah he's been doing one of these for every uh, for every issue different ways you could kill a spider <laughs> yeah I think one's getting swatted by a newspaper that's the one this I pre-ordered was the one getting whacked by a, yeah, yeah that's one with the bug spray yeah. so th those are really I like when he goes really clever with yeah them. next up we have Ultimate Black Panther number ten. And this is our variant. This is our Sean Isaacs variant. I mean, you've got Sean Isaacs mm -hmm. everywhere now at Marvel. But in this one, it says Black Panther and the Strange Doctor. So I think we're finally getting into uh, maybe who the exact Doctor Strange is. Yeah, and, when it, and it says Strange Doctor, capital S, capital yes. D. So I wonder if in this universe... They don't refer to it's, it's not whoever it is isn't called Doctor Strange. It's just the you know the Strange Doctor. Yeah, and but we don't know who it is. We've yet, seen though. various people, but they they seem to refer to the Sorcerer Supreme and Doctor Strange or the Strange Doctor separately. Okay, when they're referring to one or they're huh. referring. So I you know we had the idea before maybe the Sorcerer Supreme is not Doctor Strange right. but another person. So we'll have to wait and find out. But it sounds really cool, and I'm excited to read. And get some more characters in to the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. 
Well, we have, speaking of the Ultimate Universe, we have Ultimates number seven. This is the start of a new story arc. Uh, a member does leave the team. We have our theories about who that might be. But the Ultimates launch their bold new plan to change the world. So, you know, we know that we are coming up on... This comes out in December. And we know also in December we are getting the... Uh, there's a one-shot called uh, Ultimates One Year In. Yeah. Which is kind of like a... A, uh, like a midway point between here's everything that's come before and here's everything that's coming soon. We've seen the cover of that. There's Nick Fury, OG Nick Fury's on the cover. Uh, they announced at uh, New York Comic Con that uh, we're getting an Ultimate Wolverine book. So, yeah, lots of stuff to come for the Ultimates, for the Ultimate Universe. And, and I love to see that we've got Human Torch yeah. on the team. So this is post free comic book day right. story from uh, this year. Or from last year, I guess it was this year, May of this year. Yeah, it was May of this year. Had yeah. the, the Human Torch story in it. The only thing is, I want to see them all together because they've we've had all these covers with the team together, but we haven't really seen them all together yeah, yet, except maybe the them. first yeah uh, first first issue. But uh, yeah, so there is our uh, A cover, and then there is an Inhuk in Lee uh, variant with Jim Hammond, the original Human Torch. And it looks like he can like look regular too. Yeah, because uh, did the original? Could he ever do that? Or was oh he, yeah, okay. he looked he, he looked like that too. Just a big like a, a plain red jumpsuit, blonde hair. Yeah, he looked exactly like okay. that. Okay, that's really cool. Next up, we have NYX number six, and this one's really cool. One because Kamala got tickets to a Dazzler concert, uh, but Mojo may have plans of his own for the mutants in attendance. So that does seem like a place where Mojo would have fun yeah. messing with people. The other thing is. Uh, if you're wondering who this character on the cover is, this is uh, Kaden Nixon, who had their first appearance in NYX number one back from 2003. Oh, okay. So they're actually pulling in some uh, NYX characters. And her power was time acceleration, which to most people looked like super speed. But for her, she could stop time, basically, and go and do stuff. And if she touched somebody, the like momentum would be crazy once she got out. That's so they cool. would like... You know, she'd poke them and then yeah. step out of, and they would go flying. Uh, so I think it's really cool to bring her back. She kind of disappeared, and no one really knew what she was up to for a long time. So it's I'm glad they're bringing her back. And we have, this is the Elizabeth Torque variant with her. And we have the Franny variant with her as well. So it's cool to bring in some more characters. Yeah. Next up is Incredible Hulk number 19 a.k.a. Legacy number 800. So this is going to be a big issue for the Hulk. <clears throat> and in this one, the Hulk has been defeated by uh, Eldest and is now a slave to El Eldest. Elvis. Elvis, right. <laughs> he's Make a, that story. He's a slave to those hips. <laughs> his, only, his only hope is the newly resurrected Charlie Tidwell, who, is, has been, who was his companion early on in the series. Uh, she takes on the Skinwalkers of Lycana to save him, but... Will she be able to? And there's also going to be new stories in here featuring She-Hulk, Braun, which I believe is, um, that's Amadeus Cho, right? Amadeus yeah. new name. Yeah. And then uh, Red Hulk also. So, you know, like I said, big anniversary issue for Hulk. So we're getting the main Hulk story plus some backups and with other cool characters. And this is the Pete Woods cover that we didn't want you to miss. Next up, we have Wolverine issue number four. This one sounds really cool. Uh, it is Wolverine versus Constrictor. Uh, which is mm -hmm. a character I always knew because I have the Marvel Legends figure yep, of him. Yep. Uh, but he's a very cool character. Uh, him and Whiplash could just like slap each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. with, with, <laughs> uh, but uh, it does say the plot that was hinted at in issue one will take on a new meaning in this issue. And mm. I think that has something to do with what we saw at the end, at the end. with a weird material that yeah. maybe is somewhat like adamantium. Because so. we didn't see that at all in issue number two. And so. I wonder if we won't see it until issue until number four. four. Maybe that is maybe. where it comes back. But uh, this Wolverine series has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, the, the setting, the look of it, everything has been great. So I can't wait for this. This is, of course, our... Uh, uh, Bingus Marvel vs. Capcom variant. So if any of y'all played Marvel vs. Capcom, these really hit hard when you think of like the character select screen and yeah. everything, which is really cool. And we also have a Basil Dua Stormbreakers <laughs> variant, which that is Miss Minutes and the new ones that we're going to be seeing in, in the, the TVA series. In the TVA yeah. series coming up, which uh, I believe is still coming out this year, maybe in December? Yeah, I think so. Did we talk about... Has it been on FFC uh, already? It's not been on FFC okay. yet, so... Yeah, we'll be talking about that one soon. 
Well, next up is X-Men number eight. This is the first part of the Raid on Grey Malkin storyline. We know that in this um, Cyclops' X-Men team, they are planning a mission to rescue one of their own from Grey Malkin prison. Somebody, one of their own got snatched and put in prison there. But Rogue's X-Men are also planning a mission of their own, although I'm not sure what their mission is. They just want to bust up the place. Yeah. Or they have been talking about they want Xavier. That they, That's might, right. they really need yeah. him as a leader. So, I, so I'm not really sure, but it does sound like that these two missions will come into conflict with conflict with each other because that, and I think this is like a four part story that weaves back and forth between X Men and Uncanny X Men, uh, two issues of of each book, uh, and it looks like they're they're gonna butt heads basically. It's Cyclops to, team to weave while also the Avengers vs. X-Men story is going on. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. Is like We're going to have two different X-Men books where they're basically fighting each other, but then we're also going to have X-Men and Avengers fighting each other in their own books, and that's also going to be in December. <laughs> so the X-Men are fighting a lot of people in December. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is this is where it all starts for the, uh, the X-Men crossover. So this is our temper variant. Uh, there is a Bangus Marvel vs. Capcom variant. And there's a Chris Giarusso. I love this. Uh, yeah, crossover connecting variant. Yeah, so so it sounds like connecting is going to have the whole original Jim Lee X Men number one covers. Yeah, it'll probably be because that was four four different covers. So yeah. I guess it'll maybe be the four parts of this story. Line. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. And next up, we've got Uncanny X Men issue number six. Also, check out this awesome Adam Hughes cover. I love Rogue, uh, but in this one. This also sounds really cool. The young students head back to school, uh, but will they have to do? They'll have to deal with bullies, terrible lunches, and classroom flirting. And I just thought this sounds a lot like X Men Evolution. Yeah. X Men Evolution. They went to a regular school uh, and interacted with just like right. uh, regular humans, but also kind of had after school with uh, at Xavier Mansion. So. Uh, I think this sounds really cool to kind of put the students back in school, and you know maybe they'll have to come home from school and tell Rogue all, everything that yeah. happened. And I don't know. It sounds really cool. I'm very excited about this. And this is the issue before part two of Raid on Gray Malkin. Okay. So this because this comes out a week before the X issue of X Men we just talked about. So I guess it'll be Uncanny X Men number seven. This is number six. Mm -hmm. I guess it'll be number seven, which is part two of that Gray Malkin story. Okay. So we've got our A cover here, which is Adam Hughes. We have a Lubera cover with Gambit. Everyone's that looks great, favorite. yeah. And we also have a Phil Noto Marvel 2-in-1 variant, which is really fun. Yeah, I just want to read that now. Next is Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 27. This is the Todd Knock Winter Holiday variant because this is coming out December 4th and everybody's going to be in the uh, snowy holiday spirit at that point. Uh, you know... In this one, I guess Miles is still a vampire. We know that he got his new costume, his new vibranium suit in issue number 25 that came out this week. It looks really, really cool. And he still has it in this issue because uh, it says, does Miles have what it takes to pass T'Challa's grueling test in faraway Wakanda? So it sounds like he may be taking a little bit of a road trip. But while he's over there, who is web slinging around New York City masquerading as Spidey? While Miles is gone, I mean, I'm guessing it's Peter, right? I mean, there's there's plenty of spider people in New York, so could be any of them. But uh, yeah, we wanted to show you this Todd Knock Winter Holiday variant. Yeah, and we should mention, I should have mentioned at the top of the show, um, Marvel's ordering is going to be a little wonky uh, coming up. So this is two weeks worth of Marvel in yeah. one. So I believe next week there won't be any Marvel on the show uh, just for holidays and, and various stuff like that. Uh, it's going to get even crazier coming up where we've got to order like four weeks in advance yeah. or something like that. So like some I think of there's this, like seven and eight weeks in advance. Yeah. Like in a couple. So some of this comes out in November and some of it in December. Yeah. Uh, just so you are wondering like, wow, this seems like a lot of Marvel. It's because it's multiple weeks in one. Yeah. Next up, we got Action Comics number 1075. So this is a landmark issue. Anytime you hit a hit a... a you know, anything that you could make up a dollar with, <laughs> whatever quarters or tens or whatever. Uh, landmark issue. And in this one, Superman travels back to the creation of the Phantom Zone. We've already seen that he's going to be going back to Krypton, maybe meeting his father, all that. Don't know how that's going to happen yet with the time travel, but it is cool that he's going to be there at the creation of the Phantom Zone. And this is uh, going to have an election day issue that's going to follow up on what's been going on with Perry, Perry White, White, which was in like the very first issue of this run of Superman that's yeah. going on. 
but they haven't really checked back in with Perry as he's running for mayor of Metropolis. So I can't wait to see uh, what happens with that one as well. Yeah, it's been a while since they've talked about that at all. Yeah. I hope he wins. <laughs> it would be so bad. You go through all these issues like, ah, he lost. He lost, oh, well. yeah. Uh, so we have a this uh, Fumiara variant. We've got this Megan Hetrick variant, which is really nice. Love the farm. And this Perio variant, which is super cool. Next up is... Uh, Batman and Robin number 15 this uh, you know if you read issue number 14 which was the start of the all-in era for Batman and Robin Bruce and Damien were at this charity ball but then there was a new uh, villain that popped up named Memento and they were without their costumes and their gadgets and things like that and Memento is a villain who recreates tragedies from Gotham's past so they're still dealing with that in this issue um, it, it seems like a uh, uh, Memento is uh, setting fire, fire to the boiler room of the new hospital that they're in because there was a tragedy uh, of that same kind of thing in Gotham years and years prior. But who is Memento and how is he connected to Batman's past? I don't know. I guess we'll have to read it to find out. But uh, the, the the previous issue was really good, really good, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson. Uh, and this one should be as well. This is our uh, Aaron Bartling variant. There is a Gillum March Creature Commandos variant. Yeah. And there's a McFarlane Toys variant, which I think that one's really cool. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Next up, we have DC vs. Vampires World War V, number 4 of 12. Uh, really nice cover here uh, by Omer. But I also want to mention this one because it's just like that last issue you talked about. Uh, there's a new Batman lurking in the shadows, but what is his connection to Bruce Wayne? I feel like every issue is like, well, what's their connection yeah. to Batman? Yeah. Uh, who knows? He's got connections with a lot of people. We want to show you this really nice cover for that issue. Transformers number uh, 14. This is the end of the two-part like star scream year one almost the last like, issue was awesome yeah the, yeah the last issue was awesome so it's kind of like a, a we're taking a break between a big major story arcs number 13 gave us a little bit of a glimpse into star screams past on cybertron before he was even known as star scream before he had joined the decepticons and now this is the second part to that two-part story uh and that's pretty much it we don't really know too much about it yet but um i know image has been hyping this issue up quite a bit yeah i don't uh yeah it doesn't it didn't say anything like crazy in the solicitations but you should get it anyway because it's awesome i'm also wondering and they did this uh previous when they took a little break from void rivals yeah everything they try to do a thing where books get caught up mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if these two issues and then when transformers comes back it'll be you know close to like we'll have gi joe out yeah. at that point and maybe we'll start lining those books up a little bit. Well, so this comes out on November 13th, as does G.I. Joe number one. So, so maybe the end of this will line up with that. Something. Or the beginning of the next one. Maybe something happens in G.I. Joe, and then the first issue of the next one will be like, oh, now I understand that. Maybe that's what those redacted pages were. Yeah, yeah. we already know uh, at the end of Destro, there was something that really referenced an event that happened in Transformers. Yeah. So it looks like maybe we're going to start pulling some threads together i don't know there's definitely something going on because like we said with the gi joe book two pages were redacted and they don't usually ever do that with mm -hmm. the preview copies that even we get. like stuff that we get like absolute batman they don't take out yeah there was we nothing the whole thing. yeah we had the full absolute batman like a month ahead of time and it was all there but with gi joe there was two pages that they, they don't even want retailers to know about so something's going on and it's awesome like, i can't yeah, wait to, yeah, to see I what it, it is I love surprises. Yeah, so this is a Daniel Warren Johnson cover, and then there's a Jorge Corona variant, That's which that awesome. looks great. Wait a minute. What is that? Is that a... That looks like... That looks like a, a, a his tank. A his tank. Huh. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did see a his tank in the last one. Uh, that's right. Oh, that's right. When he got pulled yeah. out of... Yeah, uh, okay. When he got all smashed up, so yeah. maybe that's... Oh, wait, that's his bottom half. That's only his top half. So, yeah, they must mount him to his... <laughs> that's the I big mean, surprise. I want to see what he looks like when he transforms and he just has a his tank sticking out of yeah. the side of him or something. <laughs> uh, but we have fun with this because yeah. all of these books are awesome. Yeah, for sure. Next up, oh, this wow. is a really <laughs> awesome cover of Space Ghost. Issue number seven. Uh, this, a new story arc begins and Space Ghost is trapped on a, a mysterious jungle planet where he has to face off against the Creature King who commands a host of terrifying beasts. 
Uh, plus, you know, I don't know if this is, I guess this is a straight homage, but with the space and the way the chains are, it does make it a little, look a little bit different than the uh, Neil Adams Superman the Superman, cover. yeah. But still really, really cool. This one is done by Lau. Next up, we got graphic novels and more. Starting with... The Secret War, singular, by Bendis Omnibus. So this is going to be $75, and it collects the Secret War five-issue miniseries, and then also uh, Pulse 6 through 9, which came after that, and then the one-shot Secret War from the files of Nick Fury. And in this one, uh, Nick Fury discovers a connection between a lot of the villains of the Marvel Universe and assembles a like a like a covert strike team of those heroes there they get uh weird new suits yeah um but there's more to it than that there wasn't there like a thing they got their memories wiped the, i don't remember yeah. i don't quite remember but um there was I read it not too terribly long yeah ago, there, there's more to it though but so you have like your various you have secret wars secret wars 2 and then 2015 secret wars which but was more is, like uh espionage covert feeling than like big yeah, like, well, th yeah, those ones are like big events. This yeah. is a more a, a smaller contained secret war singular, but it was still really cool. Um, and they're collecting it all, and that's awesome because I don't have it in physical <laughs> in physical collection. Uh, like I said, seventy five dollars. This is our um, standard edition cover, which you can find anywhere books are sold. It's called classic costumes variant. Yeah, classic costumes know. variant. And then there is a secret war there's, costumes there's variant. Some covers. Yeah, yeah they're, they're uh, costumes. Yeah, so that's their that's their crazy suits that they wear. And this is a direct market variant, which you can only get at comic shops like ours. I like how that Wolverine kind of looks uh, like Ultimate. Ultimate Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah, I got a Daredevil one too. Yeah. Next up, we have another omnibus. This is Star Wars Crimson Rain omnibus. This is going to be $100. And this collects the uh, five-issue Crimson Rain storyline plus the tie-in issues that were going on during Dr. Aphra, Star Wars, Darth Vader, and Bounty Hunters at the time. You get all of those um, to complete this story that you know focuses on Kira and Crimson Dawn and the... Uh, you know, the bid for uh, Han and Carbonite. I think that mostly happened in uh, War of the Bounty Hunters, but this is the next part where uh, a lot of the big stuff goes down. And a lot of this ended up in the Star Wars Outlaws game as well. Oh, and This is around that time frame okay. uh, where you can work for Crimson Dawn and there's some references to stuff that went on in here. Have you played that? Yeah, you like I really it? like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's really fun. It's more stealth uh -huh. than I like stealth. Uh, Jedi. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like kind of assassin's creed or splinter cell ish say no more i love those games yeah it, it's really fun so uh but this is awesome if you've if you played that game to see like kind of what instigated a lot of this infighting between the different crime syndicates uh all took place through this these three series that um that went on so this is our uh lionel U cover and there's our direct market cover by uh rod rice Next is the Thor Modern Era Epic Collection, Volume 2. This is The Siege of Asgard. This is going to be $44.99 and collects Thor, the 2017 Thor series, number 601 through 614, uh, written by J. Michael Straczynski. I get these confused. This is Oliver Coypel did the art in this one. Okay. At least in the beginning of it. I'm yeah. not sure if he was still... It looks like there's a lot of creators on this one. Yeah, for sure. But uh, these Modern Era Epic Collections are great because you know they reprint some stuff of more recent time. And there's a whole bunch of cool Thor stuff from around this time. So this has some of it. Uh, so it's those issues plus um, a few other Thor books as well. But the main crux of this is 601 through 614 of that. I highly rec recommend this. This is probably my favorite Thor run. Mm. Uh, this led up to Siege. Yeah. This is when Asgard was in Oklahoma and it had a mailbox. And the, the mail guy just ran, gave their mail to outside of the... So I wonder if it's if it's actually the 2007 run. Not, I wrote to 2017, no, but Siege was way before. Because this is him in that chainmail. Yeah. Armor okay. My and bad. Everything. That's maybe that's why I was confused. Yeah. I was like, Siege I don't of remember I, uh, Asgard was like when that happened. Yeah. When the yeah. Dark Avengers, Dark Avengers read yep. by mm -hmm. uh, Norman Osborn attacked. I love him. that whole period. I, I would love so a good. omnibus of just that whole that I whole time period. I have the Siege on, omnibus. Yeah. But it, I don't think it has the Thor issues okay. in it. But. Uh, read this one if you can get the one before this because this is so good. Yeah, and I love the look for Thor in here. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's my favorite. Mail. That's my favorite look for him for sure. 
Next up, oh. what I'm really excited about, and I already own it. That's that's what they do to me. Uh, this is how they get the, you. <laughs> this is the DC Compact Comics Kingdom Come by, of course, Mark Wade and Alex Ross. One of the comics that if people say superhero comics for kids, you give them this. And this is, not that it's like graphic or anything, yeah. it's such mature storytelling uh -huh. and art that it just it redefines a lot of that. Uh, if you've never read Kingdom Come, highly recommend it. It's kind of a must read yeah. along with like Watchmen and uh, Dark Knight Returns uh -huh. and that kind of stuff. Kingdom Come is up there as well. This also introduced the restaurant that was superhero themed yeah. in the DC yeah. universe. Yeah, that's great. Where the like, waiters wear like superhero costumes. Yeah. They've got like... It's essentially like Hard Rock Cafe, but for superheroes, and I love that in this. Plus, they followed up this with like the recent um, World's Finest mm -hmm. story that they did that revisited a lot of these characters and everything. So, and for ten dollars, you can't beat this. I was gonna say, if you've never read Kingdom Come, there is no better way to read it. That, well, there's this is a great way to do it for because it's just ten bucks, and you get this awesome story. Of course, the compact comics are smaller format. But still, great format. You can still read everything. And so buy this for 10 bucks. Read it. You'll love it. Then you'll want to get like the Absolute Edition yeah. or something. You know, nice, big, colorful. But this is a great, a great book. 10 great bucks for deal. Kingdom Come. Holy yeah, cow. Everything. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have the Limited Collector's Edition, number 37, Facsimile Edition. So they've been doing a bunch of these. They did the Superman Muhammad Ali one. There was the Superman Wonder Woman one that came out a couple weeks ago. There was a Batman, the um, Razal Ghul. The, the Rachel Ghul stuff by, by Neil Adams. And then um, this is another one. So it's those big, like, treasury size editions. Um, and it's a special all villain issue featuring five thrilling tales of Batman fighting his greatest enemies. There are some classic. There's some so there's some stuff from Bob Kane, uh, Jim Aparo. Like it's a it's a who's who of Batman creators and artists in this. Um, so this is going to be really cool. There's going to be a regular version, a foil version, and, probably and a, sketch uh, version. a sketch version. Yeah, but sketch one should have like the the lights, but you can fill in. Or you put your own. Yeah, you put Bane and, yeah. and Mr. Freeze. Put your own characters in there. Yeah, but uh, I I love these. I, I've been getting the foil ones. They look so good. And if they're still on the newsprint paper, yeah. these things are fantastic to get. And I, uh, this is fourteen ninety nine, and I believe the foil edition is nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I think that's sure. what they've been yeah. doing. Uh, so yeah, those are awesome, and they look great. Mm -hmm. They're fun to hold. They're yeah. so big. The the artwork on the those pages are huge, and you just get these. It's not like reading a comic book. Like you like, you know, like you know, you you have to move your yeah, arm it's like to flip the newspaper. pages. Yeah, they they're great. I love these. Well, that is it for comics from the future. This is a great show. There's so many good things on here, so you don't want to miss out on any of it. So head on over to infinityflux.net right now where you can place your pre-orders for these books so you're guaranteed to get them when they come out. There is no guarantee once they come out that you can get them because we can't control how people frenzy buy them and yep. read them. Uh leading up to it, but we can control it up until our point of order. So don't miss out on these. Absolute Batman for sure. Uh, we've got so many good ones on here. Uh, G.I. Joe number one is, I mean, almost positive it's going to sell out. Maybe day one or, you know, depending on how your store orders. So guarantee you get your copy or your variant because not every store orders every variant. You've got to let us know which ones you want so we can make sure to order it for you. And whether you shop locally and you can come in and pick it up or we ship it out to you, we've got awesome shipping rates and everything over on our website you can check out. And yeah, uh, we've got a show coming up on Monday where we're going over the books that uh, are coming out next week. Mm -hmm. We've got some great ones, including Iron Man number one, Absolute, Absolute Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman number one. Yeah. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on that. And then... On Wednesday, we're going to be doing a New York Comic Con wrap-up show. Yeah. We're going to be talking about all the crazy news we were getting that I'm sure even more has come out while we're doing yeah. this video. You know we're going to be talking about uh, Aquaman number one. That's the oh, only thing I care about. so excited for that. Yeah. We've got uh, <laughs> some of the new uh, Absolute books coming uh -huh. out. Uh, Green Lantern, Flash, Martian Manhunter. Uh, we've got Ultimate Wolverine. Ultimate Wolverine. There was a there there was a the Project Adam book from DC that they yes. announced. Uh, there was something else from Marvel uh, that I don't remember, but yeah, there's just a ton of stuff, and we're yeah. gonna be covering all of it 
on Wednesday once the dust kind of settles and we can we can spread it out all on the yeah. table and go over each of them uh, individually, but mostly spending time on Aquaman because we know <laughs> that's what you care about as much as I do. I think maybe you're a little you're a little biased. I don't know if I'm biased. I'm not getting paid by Big Aquaman. That's true. Right, Big Aquaman. To promote yeah. this, uh, I'm just a huge Aquaman fan. So <laughs> until next time, which will be Monday. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and see you see later. Ya.